Hello, my name is John, and this is the Mask Face Journal, and this is what I read this week. We begin with Green Arrow number 10, written by Benjamin Percy and art by Juan Ferreira. I like this issue much better than the last. I do think it's a bit of a problem how the story of this issue is so divorced from the previous one, considering that it takes place directly after it. I think that the setting for this is really quite cool, and it's helped by the fact that the art is a lot better this time around. I do find it funny how Ollie and company can't go anywhere without just stumbling into trouble. This has nothing to do with them, they're just there and bad things happen. Oh, and yay for Bugs and Glove Arrow! Catwoman Election Night, number one, written by Meredith Finch and art by Shane Davis and Igor Vitorino. Backup story by Mark Russell and Ben Caldwell. One thing is for sure, either I or this comic doesn't know how aging works. We have a lady in this that ages approximately 30 years in a 10 year period, whatever. It's almost impossible to discuss this without it getting political, as both the primary Catwoman story and the backup press story is steeped in political satire. It's probably not going to be very enjoyable for die-hard Republicans to read Read this, as it mocks several Republican political positions, gun control and birth control in particular. They're also clearly making the Penguin into Donald Trump in this, but kind of avoiding making his opponent into Hillary Clinton. The name and gender is analogous to Clinton, but nothing else really. I think it's probably a little funnier to me as an outsider to the American political system. Justice League number 8, written by Brian Hitch and art by Neil Edwards. This feels like a 90s, early 2000s kind of story, where computers are magic and hackers are wizards. That being said, it's not that bad. We get some pretty cool stuff with Batman and Cyborg under extreme pressure. I do have a hard time believing that just one person died in the super weird alien cosmic giant global earthquake machine incident though. The way it keeps going back to that grieving family probably means that it's important to the current event, but as of now it's far from clear how. Still, I feel that this is interesting enough to warrant me continue reading. Let's hope it's less incomprehensible than the last story. Batman number 10, written by Tom King and art by Michael Janine. I am so not sold on this. First, the entire issue is almost completely silent, with the main exception being monologue boxes from an unknown narrator. The narration has virtually nothing to do with the actions on the page, and it's therefore something that makes me lose attention fast. Sure, it's revealed who is narrating later, but that doesn't really help. Second, I feel that it's somewhat hard to follow what is happening in the panels, or rather why things are happening. For some damned reason, Batman just keeps saying the same lines over and over. Third, the thing that I had reservations about last issue, I continue to have reservations about now, even more so when we get to know more of the details. I'll admit that it might be a fanboy thing, but it's so out of character. Superman number 10 by Peter Tomasi and Patrick Gleason. So yeah, Damien is a dick. Just in case somebody didn't know, I honestly have a hard time to come up with something to say about this other than Damien is a dick over and over. I had been looking forward to this and I find it kind of underwhelming. Every character in this overreacts to everything and that starts problems. This issue also starts on a really weird note with some sort of infected swampland with nightmare animals in it on John's way home from school. What that is, is not explained or expanded upon, which is not great because that's the most interesting part of the book. The Flintstones, number 5, written by Mark Russell and art by Steve Pug. This continues to be a really good book. Less laugh out loud moments in this one though, as it's more focused on the atrocities committing during the war that Fred and Barney fought in. There's also stuff in this tied to the election, which you might be sick of hearing about at this point. But it's not so much an analogy for this election in particular, it is more a riff on warmongering, scare tactics and populism in general. So yeah, this is a solid book and I'm recommending it. So that was what I read this week. Did you enjoy this video? Please like, comment and subscribe and share this video. If you didn't enjoy it or disagree with me, please let me know in the comments and I am out of here.